I, I want to say something that's probably, it, it, it's not controversial. It should be what everyone in here understands. But just because you have a startup does not mean that you have a tech company. And just because you have a company that may be a tech company does not mean you're venture backable. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are out here raising money. And when you're raising venture capital, the expectation is, is that you're going to provide significant returns over a relatively short period of time. And if your business model isn't going to get you there, you will fail and you will owe people a lot of money. And because there's so few of us who actually raise significant, cap significant capital, you will, everyone will know your name and everyone will know your failure. And there's a few of them out there um, that, you know, don't need to be said, but you need to know what type of company you have. And I wanted to ask you, you know, what, what are the things that you think are important that a founder consider before taking venture capital? Um, I know that we haven't been as privileged to do traditionally the family, friends, quote unquote, full round. Um, but I, this is what I would challenge you all on. We definitely love to dress. We definitely are spending money on concerts. Challenge your, you know, question your circle. You, you know, as a founder, you need to, in order to grow, you need to change your circle of like-minded people. Challenge yourself to all save $250. Let you guys put the first $10,000 in. I think that's really, really important because you are able to look at it from a different perspective when you're putting your own money in. Challenge your friends to be a part of it. Let's start changing these narratives, these conversations that we're having with our close circles. Um, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you need to make sure that you are around other successful founders. It doesn't mean that the company has to be at a certain place, but it does mean that you need to be around like-minded people. Um, so that's definitely... Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's, it's a problem that I've, I've just seen a lot where I see companies who are trying to raise money for you know, a sock company and they're out trying to raise venture capital. They're calling themselves a tech company, but it's not. And, 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 and yeah. you know, I want to say this. Um, I think that, again all the trending topics, you know, VC fundraising is so hot right now. But in its most simplistic form, it is a loan. And not only is it a loan, it's a loan that's expected to have a great return. And if you do not do that, you are automatically put, just like Travis said, you are put into a category of not, do not invest. And so these are the things that you really have to take a moment to think about. And that is why for me, I love companies that have stepped aside and said, you know what? We need great talent and great co-founders. Okay, I came up with the idea, but in order to grow this idea, I'm gonna need some real talent. And that really, really takes a lot of the risk away for just you as a founder. Yeah, um, so I know that you are you know, hyper-focused on investing in minority founders specifically. But as being a woman in BC. And women. Yeah, as being a woman, I was going there. Let me get there. Let me get there. Um, as, Don't confuse. Yeah, as, as being a woman in VC, where there are so few of you who are in positions of power to make decisions of actually putting capital into a company, um, have you seen, I know this is Black Men Talk Tech, but have you seen or do you, what do you believe the differences uh, are? between men, African-American men, or minority men raising capital um, in Silicon Valley and just abroad um, versus women? I think that it's the same. I think that I've sat in rooms with some of the top funders. I've co-invested with some of the top Silicon Valley VCs and the questions to women of any color and to people of color are very different than what they're asking the traditional Caucasian male founder. So I think that whether it's for women or for men, now what I will say is men are not asked of any color, when do they plan on having more children? Or do they have children? Unfortunately, these are the questions that are, are being asked to female founders. So I would say that's pretty much one of the differences. But the bottom line is, it's a problem, right? It's less than 2%. So we're all, we're all in the same boat when it comes to how difficult is it. Right. Uh, but the only question I have seen that is very different is the, the family situation. Got it. Um, Which shouldn't even be a question in the room, by the way. Right. So do you have any tips for individuals who 
are going out to raise venture capital outside of, you know, people that look like them. Um, you know, what have you seen that works best for companies? Um, you know, is it is it the traction that they have? Is it is it you know what what are the things that you've seen founders possess that have made them most successful when raising money in you know San Francisco? I think that you know as a founder you need to start with short term goals. I think that sometimes again with all of this social media and all these stories and headlines and all this filtered lifestyles. I think that everyone goes from A, wanting to look at Z, which is the unicorn company, the billion dollar company, but guess what? We need companies that are in our own ecosystems that are making millions of dollars on a small level because it's changing communities. So I think that we need to focus on that business model that is small first, and then you start growing it slowly. I remember um, my very first job, I was an executive at USA Today. And one of the most memorable things that I was taught there was I would much rather have small, steady growth that's consistent than a huge growth. And then you just have to fall down. And I think we just are seeing that right now with those four examples we're talking about, right? So I think that as founders, you need to be able to connect to the local level and start growing your business.